Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the latest instalment of my bookshelf tour. So, as always, as I say, I'm just kind of powering through these now to try and get towards the end as we're near the end alphabetically and then the, that data then goes into a manuscript I'm working on which is like my life in books and then also I'm going to be able to use the index of that to go through all of the authors who've like made you know significant impact in my life and I'm going to then use that to, uh, to update my TBR as well so it's very exciting so without further ado let's get started Okay, so first up we have here Motherless Child, the definitive biography of Eric Clapton by Paul Scott. This is one that I was offered a review copy of uh, through my book blog, socialbookshelves.com. And I, like, I'm not a huge Clapton fan, but obviously I definitely like acknowledge his impact on music. And uh, so yeah, I thought it was a really interesting read, especially with some of the stuff that went on between Clapton and George Harrison and basically wife swapping and stuff. Uh, also, his child, his uh, son, died tragically, fell from a from a balcony, which is what the song "Tears in Heaven" is about. So, yeah, it was just an interesting read, you know, to get some background insight on on Clapton and his music. Here we have the beautiful poetry of Donald Trump, created by Rob Sears. This is a recent read for me, actually, and this basically takes Trump's tweets, his speeches, all of this stuff, and creates this poetry that's kind of like found poetry that's all sourced as well. So uh, I'm going to read you this one, for example. These people are losers. Jeb Bush is a low energy stiff. Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting both inside and out. Carly Fiorina is terrible at business. Sasha Baron Cohen is a moron. John Stewart is a joke, not very bright and totally overrated. Cher is somewhat of a loser. Lord Sugar, you're a total loser who Piers Morgan doesn't think is very smart or very rich. These people are losers. Thank the real Lord that Donald Trump exists. And what I think is good about this is that, like, you can enjoy it no matter where you are on the political spectrum. It's just a giggle, you know? So, um, yeah, you could be pro or anti-Trump and still enjoy that, I think. Here we have Geek Wisdom, The Sacred Teachings of Nerd Culture, edited by Stephen H. Seagal. Presumably not Stephen Seagal. And this just has lots of different things. So we've got, that's the Blues Brothers, uh, the Moon Landing, uh, Army of Darkness... The Left Hand of Darkness, Legend of Zelda there, like all your base are belong to us. Uh, me fail English, that's impossible. So it's just got loads of like, you know, geeky quotes from various geek shows and games and culture things. Uh, and then kind of tries to explain the, the hidden wisdom in them. Okay, next up we have Will Self. So we'll start with The Book of Dave. So this was required reading at my university. This is basically... It's very hard to explain. I guess you'd call it literary fiction. It's kind of set in the future after our society falls and a new society is risen. And they worship the teachings that are found in the Book of Dave. However, the Book of Dave is just the ramblings of this London cab driver that was like addressed to his son and just somehow survived the test of time. And they kind of interpret it as this like religious text. And what's interesting about this is my friend Dave was a London cab driver at the time that Will Self was writing this. And Will Self... While my friend Dave never gave him a lift, his taxi company did quite often. And so Dave basically reckons it could be inspired partly by one of the cab drivers mentioning, oh, one of our cab drivers is writing a book. Because you would do if you found out, you know, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I write books. Oh, one of our cab drivers, you know, so possible there. And here we have the book by Will Self, which is basically about a man who d decides to give up smoking. And he flips the last cigarette butt off a balcony and goes, right, that's it, I've quit. And uh, it lands in someone's hair and it catches fire and he finds himself, like, on the receiving end of a lawsuit. So, yeah, I probably do. At some point, I will read more Will Self. I don't... I haven't decided yet whether I like him or not. I think I probably don't like him as a person, but I like his work, or at least I respect his work, because it always makes me think. I don't necessarily enjoy reading it, but it makes me think, you know? Here we have Catus Petasatus, the cat in the hat in Latin, by Dr. Seuss. So this, as it says, is the cat in the hat in Latin. So uh, here we go. Sistam rubram laeti ferens, sistam ligno factam garens, unto clausam ponderosum, fetam strophis ominosum, novum ludum mox disatis, inquit, quid nunc hic vedatus. So translations of that in, uh, in the comments, please. I do also have The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss, and seeing as they're both official versions... I think I, yeah, look, here we go. Here's the same illustration. So that meant a big red wood box. It was shut with a hook. Now look at this trick, said the cat. Take a look. So there we go. There's the translation. Here we have Cat at Home by Kirsty Seymour Yore. This is just cute photos of cats with little quotes, basically. 
I pick these up every now and then when I see them in charity shops just because, you know, I'm a cat man. Although I also love dogs. Okay, we're on to my Shakespeare. So uh, first up, I believe this is what? Is this Antony and Cleopatra? Oh no, this is A Midsummer Night's Dream. Really beautiful old edition. It's actually got someone's name written in the front and I can't read it. Uh, she never sees truth of human relationship in simple way, it says. Bell's Grammar School Colford. Here's Antony and Cleopatra. I enjoy that one because um, I mentioned before I like Egyptian history and, you know, Cleopatra coming at you. Here I have Hamlet. Probably not one of my favourite of his plays, but I understand why it's so highly rated. Macbeth, the Scottish play. Uh, I've never seen Macbeth and I would love to. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think the rule is you're allowed to say, actually, I think I got that wrong because you're allowed to say this is Macbeth because it's the book. But if you're seeing the play, it's the Scottish play. Otherwise, it's bad luck. Here we have Othello. I sort of picked this up. I was a bit inspired to after Roya from Roya Eve Reads. Uh, she was reading Shakespeare for, you know, college or university or whatever she calls it. I think she's from um, the one that's not Australia, New Zealand. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so she kind of inspired me to pick that up. And it was an interesting one, although plot holes galore. Here we have Richard II. Honestly, don't really remember it. I'm, I'm, I'm not too big on just... British royalty in general, so the, the kind of the royal plays don't really stand out to me. Romeo and Juliet, studied this at pr uh, secondary school, and I've seen this a bunch of times. I actually saw that a midnight matinee of this at the Globe in London, at midnight just at the end of my birthday, so my birthday was June the 11th, and as it went from 11.59pm on the 11th to midnight at the 12th, this play started, stars are all out, and luckily it was warm. And at the Globe as well, very cool. Here's The Tempest. don't really remember The Tempest much either, unfortunately. Or this one, Twelfth Night. So, yeah, I guess it probably depends upon my mood when I pick them up into how much how much they stick with me. Here I have Problems by Jade Sharma. This is an uncorrected proof. And this is a, another drug book, which I'm always a fan of drug books. Uh, I'll read you the blurb, why not? Funny, observant, self-destructive Maya has problems. A sweet, handsome, heavy-drinking husband she's not sure she loves. Her detached, selfish lover. Her overdue thesis and dead-end job. Her dying mother. Herself, most of all, and her escalating drug habit. What's left when those are peeled away? Balancing vivid intensity with numb disdain, Problems makes a story of addiction and redemption fresh, necessary, and desperately funny. Explicit and raw, Problems is an astonishing debut novel. So there we go. Uh, here we have uh, Marjorie Weinman Sharma, Mitchell is Moving. Uh, this is just a kid's book, and the reason I've got this, basically in a song by Bright Eyes, I'll link to it below, called uh, A Spindle, A Darkness, A Fever, and A Necklace, I think. Uh, it's a really beautiful song, but it has, like, a sample of a kid reading this story, so I just had to get it, because you know me and books. Here we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Not too much needs to, to be said about this. A classic, and uh, one of my favourite classics, especially of that era. Has some really interesting questions about morality and that sort of thing. Then here we have Disconnect by Imran Sadiq. So uh, I can't remember how I met Imran, but he, he's kind of like a YA writer, I suppose. Uh, this is book one of the Divided Worlds trilogy. Whether it be dug in waste or rummaged from the sewers, every prize that is found must be handed in. That is the rule of scavenging. But when Zachary meets Rosa, he's intrigued by her sadness and breaks the rule. It will change his life, and he will suffer for it. Zachary will overcome worthlessness and fight prejudice to protect the new reason he lives, Rosa. And uh, he designed the cover himself as well, which I think is very cool. One other thing to mention as well is back in the day, before I did BookTube or anything like that, I was in a, a, a video called uh, I'm a Writer, which I'll link to below, which kind of went mini viral. I think it had like 30,000 views or something. But, um, and it kind of brought together a load of different writers and I, I appeared in it, so that was cool. Okay, let us continue. Uh, next up, we have When All Balls Drop by Heidi Seifkas, The Upside of Losing Everything. And uh, basic, well, I'll read you this just part of this blurb here. Heidi Seifkas was a happily married, globe trotting professional who seemingly had it all until a tree limb in New York's Hudson River Valley struck her down, breaking her neck and leaving her unconscious. Suddenly, life as she knew it stopped. She lost her independence. She lost her career. She watched her marriage disintegrate as she confronted a trail of devastating lies about her husband's double life. And this basically goes into the accident and then the subsequent recovery and looks at why, you know, there's there's still an upside to life, even when it seems like think everything's going wrong. Here we have a few books edited by William Seacart. So this is 100 Prize Poems, 25 Years of the Forward Books. This is Poems of the Decade, an anthology of the forward books of poetry. 
and this is the Forward Book of Poetry 2018. These three were all ones that were sent to me when I won a National Poetry Day comp uh, competition. And uh, yeah, they're just different poetry collections from the Forward Poetry Prize, who I believe uh, Jen Campbell sat on the panel for this year. And then also by William Seagart, we have this, The Poetry Pharmacy, Tried and True Prescriptions of the Heart, Mind and Soul. And this is like, you can see, look, look at the quality of the print of the book. That's beautiful. It's got a blurb on the back by Stephen Fry as well. And just, so it's got like all these, like, here we go, condition, making mistakes. And then here's a poem for, that you can prescribe to yourself. Here we have The Pathkeeper by N.J. Simmons. I think I actually met her at a London book fair once and then I was offered a copy of this for review and I thought, why not? It's pretty good. It's a fairly typical sort of YA fantasy as far as I recall. Yeah, the first in a thrilling new YA fantasy series. Uh, so yeah, if that's your kind of thing, it's a good enough exa example of the genre. Here we have Life After the Undead by Pembroke Sinclair. Uh, so she is a fellow indie author. I actually met her through Book Trope, the uh, publisher I used to be published through back in the day. And I, I interviewed her for my upcoming novel, Meet, because basically this is a zombie novel and I wanted to ask her some questions about zombie stuff. And uh, as this kind of implies from the title, I think this takes place like after the apocalypse. And so people have already kind of settled down to new lives and we sort of follow things from there. Here we have Simon Singh, The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets. And this is like uh, a popular mathematics book about The Simpsons and how there are all these like in-jokes and sort of uh, mathematical jokes because a lot of the creators of the show like, like had studied mathematics or had studied science and that kind of thing. And uh, I actually saw Singh do a, a speech here in uh, High Wycombe. So, uh, so yeah, I got a signed copy. I got him to sign it while he was there. And, uh, yeah, very cool. Here we have Exotic Neurotic by Kenneth Jarrett Singleton. Uh, this book's a bit battered, but I don't, I don't really care. This is my most liked review on Goodreads is about this book. I'll link to it below. Because, uh, basically I didn't like it. So I think I gave it three stars or two stars. And then this guy, in retaliation, used the same fake name he'd used to give himself fake five-star reviews. He then used that to post fake one star review on one of my books and uh, so I mentioned that in my review and it turns out like a lot of other people have also had sort of similar negative experiences with the author of sending them a copy of his book them not liking it and then him kind of harassing them so uh, maybe avoid that one here we have The Blue Fox by Sean. Sean is an Icelandic author and uh, he also has worked with Bjork as well it's like a combination between a fable and a fairy tale and literary fiction, I guess. I'll read you the blurb. The year is 1883. The stark Icelandic winter landscape is the backdrop. We follow the priest, Balder Skuggason, on his hunt for the enigmatic blue fox. And just as the priest pulls the trigger, we are swept away to the world of the naturalist, Friedrich B. Friedrichsen, and his charge, Abba, who suffers from Down syndrome. When she was found shackled to the timbers of a ship run aground in 1868, Friedrich had fortuitously come to Abba's rescue. The fates of all of these characters are intrinsically bound and gradually, surprisingly, unravelled in this spellbinding fable that is part mystery, part fairy tale. Uh, there we go. And it's blurred by Bjork. And yeah, it was pretty good. I will be reading some more Sean at some point soon. Here we have Mike Skinner, The Story of the Streets. So Mike Skinner is the like lead songwriter and vocalist for The Streets. He's actually from Birmingham, or near Birmingham as well, so kind of local to where I grew up. And this is his autobiography, and actually it was really well written. There's a reason it won the NME Best Book Award 2013. And just if you're into The Streets and their music, then uh, you should you should give this a read. Yeah. Probably one of my favourite like musical autobiographies. Here we have That Should Be a Word by Lizzie Skernick. A language lover's guide to chorgasms, povertunity, brattling, and 250 other much needed terms for the modern world. So it's kind of like a take on almost like Urban Dictionary or something like that. It's nicely laid out and it gives you these words and examples of them and whatnot. I mean, it's alright, it's a bit gimmicky really, I guess. I got sent this for review though and, you know, because of that I gave it a read and it was, it was alright. I don't know if I'd say to go out of your way to get it unless you're really interested in it, you know? Here we have Karen Slaughter, Last Breath. This was a novella. I picked this up in uh, Spain when I was on holiday there, basically because I'd seen Harriet Rosie kind of raving about Karen Slaughter all the time. My mum used to read her as well. And yeah, I did enjoy this. And I'm not sure whether this was a standalone or not, but it worked for me as a standalone at least. I don't know if the characters have previously been in it and have more depth and background to them, you know. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this. And I think actually just for the, you know, just because it's this kind of length, it's the perfect length to to try a new author with you know so i tried her enjoyed it and now i will read some more 
Here we have Proud by John Smart, Achieving Customer Service Excellence. Uh, this is basically another random business book. It actually introduces the Proud model, which I don't remember, so clearly I haven't been implementing it in my, in my work life. But if it sounds like your kind of thing, feel free to check it out, you know. And then here I have Elgin Park, Visual Memories of Mid-Century America at 124 Scale by Michael Paul Smith and Gail K. Ellison. So uh, basically, Elgin Park is this fictitious town that Michael Paul Smith has created. And as I say, it's, uh, it's you know, 124 uh, scale. So you can see him there working on some of the models. And we actually have a lot of stuff about his creative process. And then we start to see different pictures of different things he's made. So here's a house, for example. And then you've got like visitor comments that people left on his blog. And sometimes you can see behind the scenes as well. So we can see here, this is uh, news happens in Elgin Park. And so you can kind of see here, there's been a car accident. And then on the next page, here's that shot actually being taken. And it's just really cool. It's just a really cool artifact. And uh, yeah, this is another one I was sent for review and just, it blew my mind. Okay, next up we have Unapologetic Poetry by Michelle Smith. And this says, I will never apologize for being who I am. I'm going to uh, read Player to you, written in 1998. Player, 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 always playing games. I lost the page. I guess I'm going to read I've hurt you to you. I've hurt you so bad and I didn't know. I've hurt you so bad because your friends have told me so. There's pain in your heart and sorrows too. There are memories of me loving you. But I kept it inside and you didn't know. Maybe because I didn't want to let go. I've hurt you so bad and I didn't know. I've hurt you so bad because your friends have told me so. And yeah, not really my kind of poetry, but, um, you know, you might like it. Here is uh, an advanced proof copy of Mistress Pussycat by Joyce Snyder. Adventures with submissive men in the world of femdom. And basically, she used to be a dominatrix, and this is her memoir. You alright, Biggie? Uh, publication date, the 7th of September 2015, so it's like a four-year-old ARC, I guess. And yeah, it was interesting, like, I found it... It's a different world, you know, it's very alien to me and so it was really interesting for me to go in and see what a career as a dominatrix actually involves, you know. Here we have Brian Solis, Engage, the complete guide for brands and businesses to build, cultivate and measure success in the new web. And this is another sort of very influential social media and digital marketing book. I actually didn't think much of this and I tweeted my review and uh, Brian Solis I can't remember what he basically replied saying it was kind of my fault that I didn't enjoy the book but um that kind of soured me on it as well but as I say it is very influential much more influential than this which is web analytics for dummies by Pedro Sostre and Jennifer Leclerc um I just went through a lot of the for dummies books about digital marketing back in the day when I first got into the the career which is kind of funny because I don't even do it anymore and I'm glad I don't do it anymore as well here we have The Complete Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Uh, this is a Pulitzer Prize winner. And as you can kind of see, it's about Nazism. Uh, basically, Spiegelman's, I think it's his father, uh, was in Auschwitz. And this kind of recounts the story of what happened to his father. But also we see his father telling him the story. But there are just huge amounts of... Um, like visual imagery in here so for example uh the germans are cats the jews are mice um i, I can't remember what the poles are i think the poles might be pigs and so um it's almost animal farming in that respect a lot of the imagery is stuff like this so you see this path there and actually if you look closely at it it's a swastika and so uh i don't know i think there's just a lot of really sort of things to this that you keep picking up on it on a reread you know here we have Jim Stern, Social Media Metrics, How to Measure and Optimize Your Marketing Investment. This is all about, you know, measuring your ROI, your return on investment, keeping an eye on what you spend, looking at the results you get, setting up analytics, etc., etc. It's part of the New Rules of Social Media series, which is run by David Meerman Scott, who I talked about in the uh, last video. And uh, yeah, here we have some Lauren St. John as well. So uh, basically, she was one of the first authors I interviewed for my book blog. She actually approached me and asked if she could if she could do an interview and then I started seeing her books in charity shops and I thought that was pretty cool so I decided to start collecting them so I've got here Dead Man's Cove which is the first one I got which is almost like a murder mystery The Last Leopard here and The Snow Angel which is absolutely stunning look and these all 
they have messages of like conservation for animals and you know encouraging vegetarianism and, and that sort of thing but for example in the snow angel it also looked at things like uh, superstitions in Africa where albinos are often like killed for their body parts because be people have these superstitious beliefs about them and um, you know it looks at the slums in Nairobi and all this kind of stuff so a lot of these sort of social justice issues around the globe that Lawrence and John is just really good at writing about and they're kind of books for for kids I suppose you'd call them middle grade but um, even as an adult I think you can appreciate those themes you know Okay, up next we have Dr. Andrew Stanway, Overcoming Depression, Sympathetic Advice for Sufferers and Their Families. I basically read this years ago when I was diagnosed with depression. Um, it is actually probably more geared towards sufferers' families than the sufferers themselves, so I don't necessarily know, you know, how relevant it is as a sort of a self-help kind of book, but it was interesting enough to get a bit of a background. It's kind of dated now, but hey-ho. Here we have Gertrude Stein, Three Lives. I picked this up at a charity shop after studying Stein at a uh, university. Here we have John Steinbeck of Mice and Men. I read this as a buddy read with Catless Reads, actually. went not long after sort of getting into BookTube. And I will link below to my review of it. I thought it was fantastic. It was one of my books of the quarter. And I'm just kind of sad I, I never read it at school, you know? Here we have Robert Louis Stevenson, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with The Merry Men and Other Stories. So this is just an old Wordsworth Classics edition. And uh, yeah, I, I thought Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was pretty well written. And uh, The Merry Men, I don't remember. What else we got? We got Olala, which I recently reread actually. And uh, yeah, some other stuff. Okay, at this point we then have R.L. Stein, who is the author of the Goosebumps books. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish off what else is on this shelf and then I'll link below because I've already done my Goosebumps collection and uh, if you're watching the whole bookshelf or playlist or series or whatever, technically the Goosebumps video comes after this one. Uh, as we did in the past when we got to Terry Pratchett. So then moving on we get to Bram Stoker, so here we have Dracula, obviously a classic, one of the classic horror novels I suppose you'd call it. It's also kind of epistolary written in the form of like diaries and letters and that kind of thing. Uh, fantastic. Here we have Dracula's Guest and other weird stories. So I believe Dracula's Guest was the original opening chapter to Dracula and then he decided he didn't like it and he decided not to go with it. So it kind of got published uh, here and in other places as a standalone short story. We have The Judge's House and here we also have The Lair of the White Worm as well which I actually reread earlier this year I want to say and found it to be not as good as I remembered it to be but um yeah I had a period at uni when I was really into Stoker so hence here we have Snowbound the record of a theatrical touring party and um yeah this is basically basically Stoker spent some time on tour with what was his name Henry Henry Irving so yeah he, uh Stoker was uh, the business manager for Henry Irving and Irving was a hugely successful actor of his time and so this is kind of inspired by Stoker's time with Irving because this follows like a theatrical touring party and they get stuck in the snow and then to keep themselves kind of sane while they wait for rescue or for the snows to melt they start telling each other stories. Here we have The Shoulder of Shasta. Weirdly, this is in the same edition as these Desert Island books, and they're both actually set on the top of sort of snowy mountain. California in the 1890s, the wooded slopes of Mount Shasta provide the setting for this drama in which an English rose essay falls for Grizzly Dick, a rugged bear hunter who had been assigned to protect her and her family from the wilds. Okay, so just a mountain, not a snowy mountain. Here we have Dracula the Undead. This is by Dacre Stoker. This is the official sequel, and I'll, it says on the back here, Based on Bram Stoker's own notes, this authorised sequel is written by a direct descendant of Stoker and a well-known Dracula historian. Fast-paced, full of suspense and rich with historical detail, Dracula the Undead will captivate admirers of gothic literature. And obviously it's not the same. It's kind of a bit like when you read somebody who's kind of novelised an Agatha Christie play or something like that. And you can tell it's not Agatha Christie writing it, but you still want to read it because you love Agatha Christie. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And here we have Unselling by Scott Stratton and <laughs> by Scott Stratton and Alison Kramer. This is the new customer experience. They've also written a book called Unmarketing, and I think the idea is the best way to sell to people is not to be seen as to be outright selling to them, I guess. But yeah, that is it for this edition of the Bookshelf Tour. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.